Hi guys, Darren from Venom Fluid Art. With bubbles. <laughs> I have bubbles with me today. Mm-hmm. Um, welcome to the Fluid Art Express. Um, up first you would have seen Taz Lima from Taz Lima Mayer Art. Then it's us two Muppets. Then we have Christy from Creations by Christy. Shannon from Shambi Fluid Art. Bubbles from Venom Fluid Art. That's me. You double dipping. I do. And then after Bubbles, we have Tony the Hippy Dippy Painter Man. Woohoo! So stay on board. Enjoy all the fun. You're going to love it. So what we're going to do today is Bubbles has never, ever resin before in her life. And I'm here under protest. <laughs> so we're going to show you how to resin. Now, I've already mixed up the resin, so if you want to know how to do that, I'll put the video link up on the screen now. Go back, watch that video, because this one's actually about resining canvas. So, are we ready, Bubbles? Oh, I'm scared. Okay. <laughs> I've never done it, but uh, I'm going to give it a crack, because it's right. something new and different. So the resin's already mixed. Yep. You can start with the coaster first if you're worried about starting on the canvas first. Yeah, well, you did that one, and I really want to keep it. <laughs> yeah. It'll be fine. Trust me. So I figured if I do the tile first, I'm going to get the feel. Okay. Get the flow. So what you're going to do is scoop up a bit of resin and put a little pool of it in the middle of that tile. Say when, because I am clueless. I know you are. So just add another another scoop. Alrighty, that's About what there. we're going to do to start with. All right. I'm just going to move that to there, so it's been up. Okay, what do I do? Okay, now pick it up in your hand. Yep like this yep so what i can do is i'll do one at exactly the same time with you so you can see what i'm doing well that would be handy that's what i was just thinking so, so this is for all noobs out there bubbles is flying blind just for you yes. just to show you that we can all do this so we've got our blob in the middle yep and what we're going to do is you can lay it over the top of another like the, that piece there yep Lay it over there, because you're going to get drips everywhere. Okay. It doesn't matter if you drip on that. All right, cool. All right, so all you're going to do is brush that. So just brushing with it your to finger, the edges? All the way to the edge. Yep. And then around the edge side of the coaster. So the lip on the side as well. Yep. So just smooth it all out over the top. All around the edges. Man, this is just like playing with glue back in school days, isn't it? It definitely is. It's not as intimidating as you think, guys. No. Yeah. So, what you want to do is break up the surface <coughs> tension of the resin. Yep. And actually rub it into the surface of the tile. Yep. Like that. So it's really rubbed in. Because acrylic pour, uh, uh, paint. acrylic paint, Yep. when you look at it under a microscope, it's actually porous. Okay. It's got millions and millions of tiny little holes. Okay. So, by rubbing it into the surface, you fill in all those holes with resin. So is it just coming from all the pigments and particles and everything? What's that? Being what you just said. All the holes? Yeah. No, it's just nature of the beast for acrylic paint when it dries. Oh, right, what's that looking like? Looking really good. Okay, so we go right around all the edges, make sure there's no dry spots. Like that. Okay, yeah. And then we stick it down. See? Not that hard. Hey. And when you feel when you run your finger down the edge, mm. if there's a dry spot, you know you've missed a piece of resin. Now oh, she's slippery. All right, so it's got to be slippery all the way, which that is. Perfect. All See? Right. And you've got all your edges. Everything's perfect. I did them too. You did. That was our yellow CA play day. All right. What we're going to do is pour some into the middle of that. 
Now, one question I have, though, because being such a noob... Yes. I've never done it before. How would someone gather how much to actually put down on a piece? Would you be better just to start with a puddle and see how it spreads out, or is it something that's just going to come with practice over time? For something like this, I know we can get that done in one go because of the size of it. That's yep. only an 8 by 10 Yep. If it was something that was... 24 by 24, Yep. what I'd do is lay a first coat on, leave it overnight, let it dry and harden. Yep. That way it stiffens the canvas. Okay, I'm with you. So it can support the weight, weight of the next load of resin. So you just sort of rub it on. Yep. The way I'm going to show you in a second. All right. And then I'd leave that overnight to do it that way. So put your first load on now. And now, just for anyone that's never done it before, it just has to be a nice, good-sized pool in the middle. Yeah. And I suppose, too, once they start spreading it out, they're going to get a rough idea if they need more. Yep. Which if you there can isn't enough, add. you can just add more to it, which is no biggie. Because these are all questions like, I've got no idea what I'm doing right now. No, you don't. You've got no idea. So I'm sort of thinking what I'd be asking right now if I was sitting watching. Yeah. And that's cool. And I am going to ask because I'm trying to do it. That's the best way to learn. All right. Yeah. So now what you're going to do is... Start with that. Yeah. Give me that one. We'll put it to one side. You worried Bubble's going to drop it? I oh, know you're going to knock it over. All right. And do exactly the same thing you just did with the coaster. So what you're doing is smoothing it out to the edges. Now the good thing about canvases is, when it's white paint, you can actually see the colour change in the canvas. That's what I was just about to say. For anyone at home, that's one of the biggest things that's just stood out to me looking at it, is I can see exactly where I've got resin and where I haven't. Because it is a bit nerve-wracking at first, because I suppose you think about it, you've done this piece where you think, you know, you've done your happy dance, it's turned out really cool. And you'd love to see it in resin, but you don't want to stuff it. No. So, like, that's actually really cool with the bit of negative space having the white there. Because you can see exactly what you're doing. Now, is this the same as the tile? Like yep. you said, you'd rub it, yep. So just because I don't know, so I just want yep. to make sure I'm on the right track and that... Rub it in, it chops up the surface tension that's on the resin. Yep. So think of a, a, a drop of water on a glass table. Yep. It hits it, and then you'll watch it suck back in and form a bubble. Suppose, too, you can just roll your fingers down the sides of that, too. That's what you got to do. You need to do all the edges just the way you did the... Yeah, that's what I'm sort of feeling here. Yeah, so you that's brush that really along the edge. That's a really easy way to do it, though. Just run it and put your finger in a circular motion as you're coming around and down. Yeah. Working for me. Now, you can actually pick that up the way you would a tile and do it like this. So, say if you pick it up, yep. you can actually put your hand on the inside piece like that. Yep. And just rub the edges. Yep. So your hands underneath, the stuff that's on the top, rub around the sides. Cool. All right, so you're going to need a bit more resin on that, I already know. I was going to say it's feeling really spread out really fine. Yep, yeah. so all you do is add a bit more resin near where the edges are. So it gives you enough to go over the sides and coat all the sides. Now, are we going over the sides just for that finished look of... Yes. ...making it look dazzling? Yeah. So pick it up and do it. That's easier. Yeah, that is easier. See, that's 
the thing, because if you've never done it before, it's the little extra tips and tricks, holding, turning, rubbing, that you just, you really, you've got no idea about. Yeah. Now, the back of that's taped up. So, when it comes time to peel the, the tape off, you just warm it up with a heat gun and you can peel the tape off from away from the resin. Yeah, that's cool. So it just makes it, it's just another tip and trick to make it simple. Yes. And less frustrating. Absolutely. Obviously, when everyone learns these things, it's, um, they've learned from trial and error in the past. Yeah. So you should be able to feel your fingers slide across that really easy. Where it's wet, there's resin. Any dry spots, there is none. Okay. Cool. Now, do I need to, where you've added, make sure that it's, see how I've got that, it's sort of grooved it's, through the resin it's there? It's hollowed or, in. Yep. All you do is rub your finger over the top, like that. Yep. Chop the surface up. And so any of these small little tracks and things that you've made with your finger, they are going to settle it down? It will self-level. Cool. Okay. So say this was a 24 by 24 canvas or something huge. Yep. That's as far as I'd go for today. Right? I'd grab my torch, torch it. Yep. Which we'll do now. So we just flick the torch. That's a little ripper. You don't let me play with that one. No, I don't. You're still not? No. Right. Alright, so we torch. Like that. Gets rid of all the bubbles. What I usually do is go cross one way, back the other way. And that way you're getting an even heat range all the way through? That way, if you've missed any from one direction, you can usually get them in the next. Is that base magnetic? Yes, it is. That's super cool. Okay, so that there is going to self-level. That's okay. awesome. And doesn't resin just revive our colours? Absolutely. Now then, you've got some other pieces here that you've got to resin as well. Yep. Which is the same as the ones I did the other day. Yep. So what we'll do is give you that and you're going to put blobs of resin on all of these other ones that need to be resined. And so can you do that all at the one go? Yep. And it's not going to matter? No, we've got about 45, 50 minutes time, working time for that resin. Yeah, see, now that's cool because otherwise I would have been thinking one at a time. No, we can do all of those. So if you start adding some to those... So that was two on these from memory, the first one? Yeah. That so that be, should do that? Yeah. Bubbles is a fast learner. Now always use a big cup like that when you mix resin. Because it sets quicker in a small cup. Yeah, well obviously you need the time to do everything, don't you? So if you've got a small cup, it goes off really, really quick. So if you use the bigger cup, you've got more time to There's do it. There's more surface heat. area for it to do its thing. Yep. Plus, what I usually do is also is dump the resin on everything. Yep. And then leave enough in the jar to do all my top-up bits and touch-ups. Cool. That way you don't have it all sitting in the cup getting hotter and hotter and hotter. That makes sense. It's already out on everything all right cool you might have to tell me because i don't know my judgment yet on these yeah this with the round no that'll be fine that should be enough to all right do you want to go add across to ones? yeah i'll do these ones and uh, can i start working these yeah you can start working those ones in i'll tell you what this is really not honestly guys not as intimidating as i like i was a nervous wreck when you said to me hey guess what we're gonna do today since you're home <laughs> and i was sort of 
petrified at first. Like, I mean, I'm never scared to give anything a go. Yeah. But you sort of think, I spent a lot of time on two of those embellishment projects that I was hoping you'd resist them so I didn't bugger it up. Yeah. But this is really cool. It's not, not as bad as you think. No, definitely not. A lot of people get really scared with resin when there's no real need, re, bleh, no reason to be. No. I think it's just because you see when you, you know, you look through different groups on Facebook and things like that and people that have just had bad experiences, I suppose. Yeah. And you can't sort of let one bad experience stop you. All right. So that one there is coded. Look at the color shift in that sucker. That's your one. All right, have a go, on, Guru. Can you feel any dry spots? None. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, so what we're doing is just rubbing that on. All right, and then just sit them down. Yeah. Go to the next one. Yeah, I'll get you to do that one. Then you, what we're going to do is give that artwork another coat. Okay. So what I like to do with canvases is do my thin coat first, get all the bubbles out, make sure it's rubbed right in. So it's sort of like it's a base for a perfect top? Yep, exactly. Okay. So think of it as a base coat for what we're about to do. And we're using stone coat countertop resin for this stuff. You've just found that's gorgeous, haven't you? It is really, really good. And I figured, because we're doing coasters as well, we can use the same stuff anyway for tiles. Yep. And artwork as well. So you don't need different types of resin if you don't want to. Yeah, well, that was another question I was going to ask. Are there specific ones for canvas to tile or to wood? There is art resin that you can use, and it's... A thinner type of resin compared to countertop. So do people use that a lot for hair canvases? Yeah. Okay, but this is fine. It's not as heavy and it's thinner, so you don't have as much chance of getting bubbles in it. But if people don't want to go to the expense, one can do... One will do all. Yeah, okay. Just be mindful in the yeah. thickness, obviously. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to doing... Um, resin moulds, like casting resin moulds, like dragons and other things like that, then you need to go to a a deep cast type resin. Is that sort of like the one Nathan did on the final distraction, that um, gorgeous dragon we yes, see? Yes, that needs to be a casting resin because it cures slowly. Yep. And you don't get a huge heat rise in it when you resin. That was a great watch that video too, by the way. If you just use normal resin, it's going to get super hot and you have got a chance of it catching fire. So, we rub all those in, break all the surface tension up. You can see how none of it's flat and level when you do that. Yeah, that's what I'm sort of going, oh, am I doing this pretty cool or not? Yeah, you're doing it perfect because it self-levels. That's the beauty of resin. That's why you need to have... <clears throat> your tabletop as close to perfectly flat and level as possible. Well, you're a lot faster than me, weren't you? Oh, look at my embellishment. Well, look at the colour. I know. <gasps> I'm excited. I've been waiting for that one to get done. That's that one. Look Whoa. at them colours pop. It's like a colour reviver. All right. How are you going with that one? I think I've done all right, look. Yep, so it's all wet everywhere. Feels it. That's what you want. Oh, hang on. You made me doubt myself then. I'm like, he's going to check this in a minute. Of course I am. Perfect. I think that'll do. All right, now what we're going to do is get the torch. Well, I don't get to touch that. 
Bit of a party torch over the top of everything. All right, so torching, is that the for leveling as well or just for the bubbles? That is for the bubbles. Yep. So the gas that is produced from that flame is carbon dioxide. Yep. That's what pops your bubbles, not the actual flame. I suppose I always sort of thought too, what can you do that, whether the heat was actually making the resin level as well or whether it was just the bubbles? The or... extra heat that comes off it yep. will thin the resin and make it a little bit more fluid. Yep. But you don't want to add too much heat to the resin anyway. You're going to scorch it and stuff it all up. All right. Okay. So now when you look at that piece there, yep. it is totally covered and flat. That's beautiful. Did I write for my first go? Absolutely brilliant. Woohoo! If you wanted, and that isn't perfectly level the way you want it, it's got little ripples and things like that, then what we're going to do is, I'll give you that because I have no gloves on now. Yep. And what am I doing? What you're going to do is pour some back in the middle. Yep. Just to give it a thicker coating now, yep. is that right? And give it another thicker coating. You can actually do an oblong type square if you want. That yep. way it'll spread out a bit more evenly as it spreads across. Is that sort of enough to start with now? Yep. Alright. So. I'm actually quite enjoying this. I'll grab I might have to start a next resin project next. Resin Watch is out. fun. I might have to do some cool beach scenes. Alright, so you're just going to chop that surface up actually what am i saying no i hate this you need to keep doing all my resin for me <laughs> <laughs> what was i thinking yeah now you gotta do your own oh dear <clears throat> all right and then on all these other ones i'm just going to do the same yep i'll add a bit more to it that's going to level out so basically I'm just going over this one just so it levels out across the top, yeah? Yeah, we'll probably put a bit more on. It's pretty thick, though. Does it have to be really thick? It doesn't have to be. It's just about making sure it stays level. Yeah, okay. So you just add more scoops to the middles. The coasters you really don't need to worry about because you've already got the first lot on there and it's already to the edges. Yep. It won't pull back. The second lot of resin will actually flow over the top of the resin that's already there and self-level. That's okay. That looks good. Okay. All right, so you put that down. Then all we're going to do is... Are you putting more? Go like this. Yep, because all you've done is break up the surface tension again. Yeah. With, with the next lot. Just going to add a bit more. Doesn't really have a strong smell. That sort of surprised me. I thought it would be stronger. No, that's because you've got a mask on. No. Oh. well. Ha. Right. Moving right along. <laughs> all right, so we just add more like that. Yep. And all we're going to do is just run our finger along the edge. Like that. Yep. Just make sure everything's wet. Nice and smooth. Perfect. So now that you've put that piece around the ledge and that, we don't touch that now? Like the rest we no, went in and... No, what we're going to do is leave that for a minute or two. Mm -hmm. We're not going to chop the surface up again. Yep. Because... So now you're just letting it settle more or less, are you? Yes. Okay. So your first coat of resin is like a guide coat. You put it on, it levels out, gets nice and smooth, and then the second lot you put on... 
is what's going to flow over the rest of that canvas and make it totally smooth. All right. Jeez, I love what resin does to color though. It makes it pop. It revives it, doesn't it? It does. And then gives it another lease of life on top of that. All right, so. So vibrant. So you've got a little air bubble there. Yep. You can either pop it with your finger. Because it's going to re-level anyway because there's it's, so much on there. It's going to mm. level itself out. That's what you do with stubborn bubbles. Stab your finger on it. Breaks the surface tension. Bubbles disappear. And you're going to level it out from there. All right. Make sure you get all the drips from underneath the edges. On your coasters, make sure you haven't got any pulling away from the edges. So if you look at it different angles, you can see where it pulls away from the edges and where it doesn't. So that's where it'll come into having a pretty decent light in decent the area as well. Decent lighting makes a big difference. All right. And because you can sort of get right down on top of it too and look across yep. at it in an angle. Another thing is, if you've got stubborn edges where it keeps pulling back, just dab your finger on top of it, like that, and it'll level back out again. Don't know whether you could have seen that on camera. Oops. I don't think so. Maybe not. But yeah, say it was this piece, you just dab your finger along the edge, like that, breaks it all up. Whack, 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 whack. And then it'll run back. Because you're breaking the surface you tension. You broke the sur surface tension up, so it runs back. Makes sense, right? Absolutely. So. You know what? That wasn't too bad. Now what we're going to do is torch it again. Make sure there's no bubbles. Go one way, go the other way. See, if there's one person I trust with resin, it's definitely you. How many years have I watched you play with it? Oh, yeah. 24 we've been together. Yeah. And you were playing with it for an extra how many years before you met me? Yeah, 35, 36 years. That's one thing I'll have to show one week two I'll um I'll take some pictures of some of the um different things that um Darren's made around the house out of resin some gorgeous clocks and work up there yeah. all right so duh, 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 duh. I'll put that on now we're going to leave that for about 10 minutes and just let it level itself out that's going to level while we're doing that we'll be scraping the edges catching yep. all the drips and putting it back in that container rather than drip it all over the table so what we'll do is press pause here we'll give this 10 minutes then we'll come back and do the rest of it okay we're back it's about 10 minutes later all of that is all covered, and it's covered beautifully. Nothing's pulling away from the edges, which is perfect. Pretty proud, just so. Now, we've got all this extra resin. Where's the camera? Let's have a look. That's left over, so we're going to make a coaster with it. So what we do is grab some little shot glasses, like this. And I'm going to pour half into that. Same for the other one. Make them even.
Okay. Scrape that up. Alright, looks about even. That look even to you, Bubbles? Pretty much. Alright. So, then what we're going to do is grab some eye candy pigment. This one is Okinawa Blue. Eye candy blues. Yep. So, we're going to add about a pinky nail full into that one. And what else we got? Azora Blue. Oh, another stunner. So we'll put that in the other one. Pinky Nail Full. Like that. Then what we're going to do is... Do you want me to mix one? Yeah, do. There okay, you go. I'm on it. So you mix that one. I'll mix this one. So scraping the sides. Yeah. So you just mix that in thoroughly. Now if you want it more transparent, don't put as much pigment in. If you want it more opaque, add more pigment. It'll make it darker. Alright, so that mixed in beautifully. This is my first of this too, it's pretty cool. Yeah, how good's this? This is what you do with all your leftover resin so you don't waste it. I despise waste. You do. So, we've got our little coaster mould that we're going to use here. Alright, do you want to check that though? Because I've never done this, so Which whether is I've just mixed it. That little silicon coaster mould, about four inches. And is that mixed right for you? Yep, I'll check it. Thank you, just because I've never done it, so I don't know what it should look like. Yep, perfect. So that... As long as you don't see any dry powder and everything's all mixed all the way through. So obviously when you pick the stick up and drop it down, you're not seeing any... Yeah. No lumpy bits. Yep. Everything's nice and smooth. Beautiful. You're good to go. You're good to go. All right. So what we'll do with this one is make it a halfy-halfy. Yeah. So what we're going to do is get both cups. Yep. There's your rubber glove. On the other hand. Okay. So pour them both in together. It's almost got a yin yang look about that, the way that's come out. It does. Almost makes me feel like there should be one blue dot on this side. Alright. There we go. Now, with those types of um, pores for resin, don't use a blowtorch for it. Why not? It is far too hot and it will destroy it. You're better off with a little lighter like this, like a barbecue lighter. So we'll pop that one open. Hang on. I've got no blood on that hand. Um, ah. Uh. Get me cheap. Okay. So we use the lighter to pop the bubbles. That's because the lighter doesn't get anywhere near as hot as what that blowtorch does. That's a really little rip of that blowtorch. Oh, it's great. Right. 
That way it gets rid of all the bubbles. Then what we'll do is just make sure it's all the way to the edge. Okay. And then you can actually throw some pattern through like that. Do the same with this side. Some swirly patterns through. Like that. Don't know whether the camera can see that, but I'll do a flyover of it anyway. So something to use that leftover oven. Exactly. So now your canvas has been sitting there for about 10 minutes. Yep. And everything started to settle really nice. Everything's looking good. Double check all your edges. Make sure nothing's pulled back, which that hasn't. It's smooth as all down the sides. Perfect. Okay. So, get our torch, give it one light go over, just to make sure there's no tiny little bubbles in there we can't see. They're not living through that thing. No. Okay, so, let's give everything a quick once over. Like that. Don't be tempted to torch your coaster that you've just used. In the silicon tray. In the silicon mold because you'll kill the silicon mold. And that would be bad. So don't do that. So no, don't do that. So that one's got a tiny little bubble right there. So all we're going to do is tap it down. Dab it with your finger. Scrape off some resin from underneath, add it to it. Okay, cool. Quick hit with the torch, boom, levels out. That way you know it's perfect on the edge. Look at that. And that'll all level out and be beautiful. Okay. And that is it. That's how simple it is to resin your coasters, your wooden MDF pieces, canvas. canvas. I mean, that's beautiful. Nothing's pulled away from the edge and it is dead flat. It looks brilliant. So, good job, Bubbles. Thank you. You did exceptionally well. Thank you for teaching me. You are more than welcome. If anybody's got any questions, just drop them in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Up next, we have Christy from Creations by Christy. So if you're in the live chat, um, just follow the links that I'm putting in there. If you're not in the live chat and you're just watching the video, click on her name in the title of the video. It'll take you to her YouTube channel. Or if you're in my private group, Venom Fluid Art, you'll be able to click on a playlist and just watch everybody else on the Express today, one after another, without having to touch a button. Makes life easy. Okay, that is it from us today. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate your love and support. So, have fun, take care, and we'll, and we'll see, see you in the next, next one. one. Bye for now. Have a fantastic day.